Hey, what's up guys? Rob here and I'm the Sci-Fi Horror Guy. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a response to Thomas, aka HorrorFan34. He did his top 20 favorite films of 1990. Now when it comes to the year 1990, there are some amazing films. Some of the best. So I thought I'd do my top 20 favorite films of 1990 including some honorable mentions, which I'll start with. I'm just going to go through these really quick. First up is Goodfellas, Marked for Death, Steven Seagal, Steve Martin, Rick Moranis in My Blue Heaven, uh, Michael Keaton in Pacific Heights. Here we have Dark Man, an underrated Jean-Claude Van Damme film, Death Warrant. Dick Tracy. Die Hard 2, Die Harder. The original Flatliners. The Hunt for Red October. Harrison Ford in Presumed Innocent. I'm just going to hold this one up. The Rescuers Down Under. Really enjoyed that one. Young Guns 2. Some that I don't have up here with me, like The Never Ending Story 2. Not as good as the first, but it's way better than the third movie. Let me just say that. Another 48 Hours. Blue Steel, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. An underrated Jamie Lee Curtis flick. Bride of the Reanimator. Class of 1999. Edward Scissorhands. Ernest Goes to Jail. Gremlins 2, The New Batch. The Guardian. Excellent film. Hard to Kill with Steven Seagal. Jacob's Ladder. So yeah, um... Those are just some that I thought were worth mentioning. Uh, I did really enjoy Thomas's list. If you haven't seen his video, go check it out. Um, but he didn't really tag me. He just said, if you want to do a response, definitely do so. So, like I said, 1990, great year, great movie. So, let's get on with my top 20, starting with number 20. And that is Rocky V. Now, a lot of people shit on this film, and I don't get it. Um, I think this is a Rocky film that's closer to the first two movies than even Rocky IV was. Rocky IV doesn't even seem like a Rocky film. I mean, it's like a montage of music, and it's it's a you know a manly movie, so to say, a lot of testosterone. But this movie goes back to the roots of the first one, and you revisit a lot of places from the first one. It even has you know the music, uh, and built by Bill Conti and the thing is like you know you have seen with Burgess Meredith that was filmed this movie is awesome I don't know why it gets shit on I just I really do not know why even Stallone shits on it and that's a shame so number 20 is Rocky 5 number 19 is Night of Living Dead Tom Savini remake I've talked a lot about this movie it's amazing Patricia Tallman Tony Todd uh, really, really excellent. Number 18 is Back to the Future Part 3. Now, I didn't really care for this when I was younger. And I didn't care for a lot of films when I was younger. I didn't care for, like, Rambo 3, Halloween 3. Just some of those sequels that you just don't really, you know, I guess, care for when you're younger, I guess. Because, you, you know, you want action. You want things to happen fast. And you want, I don't know. There was something about the Wild West setting that was boring to me, and it just didn't compare to the other ones. But as I got older, I just really appreciate this movie. I really like the Wild West setting now, and I just like the, the different scenarios. Um, and, you know, you got Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd back, but, um, yeah, I really like Back to the Future 3. So, that's number 18. So number 17 is an underrated comedy sequel. And I really love the first one. This one's great too. And there's three movies in the series and the third one kind of sucks. But no one ever talks about this one. And it is Look Who's Talking To. John Travolta, Kirstie Alley. Uh, you also got Roseanne Barr, uh, Damon Wayans, and Bruce Willis doing voices. Um, yeah, I really like the addition of Roseanne, who plays the little girl, Julie. Just a fun movie. Really, really fun. And I love the first movie. So Look Who's Talking To comes in at number 17. Number 16, another underrated sequel, RoboCop 2. 
This one gets overshadowed by the first one because the first one's so good with the blood and the gore, um, some cool action scenes, some of the most memorable moments. But RoboCop 2 is awesome too. To me, this sequel gets treated like Jaws 2. No one ever talks about Jaws 2, right? No one ever talks about RoboCop 2. So, that's number 16. Number 15 is Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, decent um, chainsaw flick. Really, 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 you know, really good compared to some of the other ones. Uh, number 14 is The Exorcist 3. In a lot of ways, I like this more than the original. Uh, the, the original will always be like a classic horror film. But to be honest, I don't find the original to be scary at all. I think the original is more disturbing. The part where she's hooked up to those machines and they're drawing blood and those loud machines and she's sitting there screaming, that's probably more disturbing than anything in the movie. But The Exorcist 3 definitely has some good stuff. Number 13, um, let's see if I can, I'm going to say Predator 2. Another sequel that gets overshadowed by the first movie. Predator 2, not many people like, and, and again, going back to the part where, you know, I said I was younger and I didn't like certain movies. Predator 2 was another one that I didn't care for when I was younger, but now I appreciate it a lot more and I really like it. Um, so, yeah, Predator 2 is just like, you know, it just reminds me of Jaws 2, never gets talked about, Robocop 2. So, Predator 2 is number 13. Coming at number 12 is Kindergarten Cop. It's not a Tuma. You tell me, who is your daddy and what does he do? Get it? One of the best Schwarzenegger films. Number 11. Now, I really was glad to see that this got a Blu-ray release, especially the second one, because I really am a fan of the second one. But I used to rent this all the time at the video stores, directed by Dennis Dugan, and it is Problem Child. Michael Oliver, John Ritter. I love this movie, and... You know, there are a lot of references, like in the movie Cape Fear with Robert De Niro, they actually go to the theater to watch this movie. This movie's playing while that movie, you know, while you're watching it. Um, but yeah, this movie's just a lot of fun. And I know Michael Oliver is kind of annoying to a lot of people, but I just think that's his character in this when he plays Junior. He's supposed to be kind of like that, but Problem Child, yeah, classic comedy. Number 10 is a Tom Cruise film that I still think that this is one of his best, especially back then, because um, I like a lot of his older films a lot more than his newer films when it comes to Tom Cruise, but this one's excellent, and it is Days of Thunder. Amazing soundtrack. You got John C. Riley in here. He looks so different. He's, like, skinny in this. Uh, this is, like, back when he first started, but um, you got Nicole Kidman, Carrie Elways. Uh, Randy Quaid, who's actually not drinking a beer for once. He's not a, he's not playing a drunk like he always does, like in Independence Day and so on, you know, in Christmas Vacation. Robert Duvall, um, story, Tom Cruise actually did the story, but it was directed by Tony Scott. Amazing NASCAR uh, movie. And I'm not even into NASCAR, but this movie I'm into a lot. So... All right, coming at number nine is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 1990 film. I remember seeing this in the theater, uh, directed by Steve Barron. And <clears throat> there's no doubt, this is the best one. This is the best one. The, the new ones that come out where the turtles are all big and CGI, it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare to this. This is a dark turtles film. Fantastic movie with a fantastic um, soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. Shredder is badass in this. Casey Jones, they actually got him right. Um, you know, April O'Neil, all of them. This is amazing. Like, the, the suits that they wear and the animatronics, they're just so good. That rooftop battle. God, this movie's awesome, guys. The original Turtles. Ugh. Coming in at number eight is Home Alone. Yes. A lovely cheese pizza just for me. 
yeah, what do I need to say about this that hasn't already been said? Uh, just a classic home invasion comedy. Number seven is Ghost. Definitely my top ten favorite Swayze films. Um... There's some creepy stuff in this. I remember the part where, like, the demons from hell come up and grab the ghost and bring them down to hell. Like, that happens twice in this movie. You're dead, Willie! And then they bring him under, and it's like... And then when he looks at Carl, he's like, oh, Carl. He's like, ah! Ah! Sam! Say it, Automate! Say something! Sam Wheat! <laughs> say my name! Say it! Say my name! Say it! Ghost. Awesome. Number six is Tremors. This is the attack pack, has, has four of them, but I'm going to say the original Tremors. This movie left a mark on me when I was younger. Um, some of the scenes still stick with me today, especially for a PG-13 film uh, with these giant like sandworms that come out of the ground and you have tentacles and pull you under. Yeah, there's just something about it. And Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward are awesome. So, yeah, I love that movie. That's number six. Number five is Total Recall. Definitely my top ten favorites uh, Schwarzenegger films. Amazing movie. Um, Jerry Goldsmith also did the music to this. You got Michael Ironside. You got Sharon Stone. Um, which was interesting because Sharon Stone was also with Stallone in the movie The Specialist. All right, so that's number five. Number four is The Witches. I've talked a lot about this movie, and they're actually remaking it, and I'm pissed off that they're remaking it. Anne Hathaway is going to play the Grand High Witch. Are you shitting me? Anne Hathaway is the Grand High Witch. Wow. She's not even going to hold a candle to Angelica Houston. I'm sorry. Angelica Houston is the best. You cannot remake this, okay? I even heard they're going to remake Hocus Pocus. What the hell is wrong with people? Stop remaking stuff. God damn it. I know Mary Poppins Returns is not a not a remake, so to say, but it's supposed to be like a sequel, but fuck that movie. The Witches. Number three. One of my favorite films by Frank Marshall. Um, and it stars... Jeff Daniels, and probably one of my favorite films starring him. It also has John Goodman in it, and it is Arachnophobia. Nice little mini creature feature, so to say, about killer spiders. Um, this movie kind of made me weary of certain spiders that jump, and say because they actually use real spiders in this in a lot of scenes. So, yeah, some freaky-ass uh, death scenes in this. Coming in at number two, definitely one of my favorite horror sequels, and that is Child's Play 2. Child's Play 2 is my favorite Chucky movie, and it always will be. I just think Child's Play 2 is the quintessential Chucky film. I love everything about it. The Toy Factory setting, everything about it. And that brings me to my number one favorite film of 1990. And it is Without Question. I talk a lot about this, directed by Rob Reiner. Misery. You cock duty They do not! What do I say when I go into the store? Oh, now, Wally, I need a bag of that effing pea feed and some a pound of that bitchly cow corn. And in, in the bank, do I ask Miss Bollinger, hey, this one big bastard of a check, give me some of your Christing money? There, look there, see what you made me do. Oh, Paul, I'm so sorry. God, I love you. Hi, pumpkin. Such a kidder. <laughs> God, we were sent on this earth to help people, Paul, the way I'm trying to help you. Please, help me help you. 
She's sitting there pouring fucking lighter fluid on him. <laughs> this movie's awesome, people. This movie, Kathy Bates is one intimidating bitch in this. She, like, honestly, imagine being strapped to a bed in an empty room looking at the door, wondering if that door is going to open and she's just standing there with a, a kitchen knife or, or a syringe or whatever, a sledgehammer. I mean, Paul Sheldon has got the biggest balls trying to get out of that room, you know, going and exploring the rest of the house and trying to lock every door until, you know, until she gets back. Trying not to let her find out that he's been out. He's got the biggest balls ever, man. Honestly, I don't know what I would do. If my legs were broken, I'd probably just sit there and scream all day. This movie terrifies me. Eat it. Eat it till you choke, you shit twisted Fuck! <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, you lying cocksucker! <laughs> Man, this movie, this is, without a doubt, my favorite film of 1990. Number one. So there you go. I hope you guys like this list. Um, it was kind of difficult to come up with this list because, oh, I mean, it wasn't difficult to pick all these movies out from like my collection, you know, from the, for the year 1990, that wasn't hard. It was hard, like lining them up to where, you know, which one do I like more? Do I like this one more? Or do I like this one less? It's just, it was hard to do like, you know, top 20 in order. So yeah, I thought I, I, I think I just have a good idea here of, um, what I th consider the best and, 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 you know, the least, or maybe farther down uh, the list. So, um, hope you guys like this list. And uh, I'm going to leave this open to anybody who wants to do a response to this. Uh, feel free to do your top 20 uh, favorite films of 1990 or your top 10 favorite films of 1990. Don't matter. Um, I'm usually a top 10 guy, but I have done top fives and, you know, other stuff before. So that's not a big deal. I just want to thank Thomas, uh, HorrorFan34, for coming up with this. And um, like I said, hope you guys enjoy this. And let me know in the comments what you think of some of these titles that I listed. And uh, stay tuned for more reviews. I'm still doing the Rambo series. Uh, I'm going to be finishing that up soon. I got some other horror movie reviews that I'm working on. Some that I just, you know, that just came to the theater. I just saw It Chapter 2. And... Um, I'll probably have my review out for that as well. I'm probably going to review the first one first. But, um, yeah. Anyway, look forward to that stuff coming up next. Uh, all right. So this is Rob signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next video.